Whether you're an avid crossfitter, a games athlete, or just the casual box goer, this video will suit you. We're gonna cover things that you didn't know about CrossFit. Comment down below anything else unique, interesting, strange, or outright crazy that is not mentioned on this list. Let's get into the video. Let's begin with everyone's favorite. Number one, the origins of Fran. It wouldn't be a list about CrossFit if it didn't include the world's worst workout. Fran is the one workout, no matter an athlete's ability or skill level, that just plain sucks consisting of 21-15-9, thrusters at 95 slash 65 pounds, and pull-ups, this workout is consistently the most widely known workout when it comes to CrossFit, causing one of the most painful feelings known to humans, the Fran Lung. But how did this workout come to be? Well, we'll have to dive back in time to the creator of CrossFit and this workout, Greg Glassman. Greg stated, as a young athlete, Glassman believed in training with weights would help him become a better gymnast. When three sets of eight lateral raises with a Ted Williams weightlifting set, which for you young folks, including myself, a Ted Williams weight set is a set of brown rusted looking weights and plates that you'd see in your parents' garage or basement. These just didn't replicate the feeling produced by a two minute routine on the rings or parallel bars. Greg Glassman had to get creative after coming up with and also self-testing a workout involving three rounds of 21-15-9 thrusters and pull-ups, Glassman promptly threw up. But he knew he had found something that would make him better at his sport. From there, Glassman invited a friend to try the same workout with similar results. And then a few decades later, this wad still challenging CrossFitters around the world. But why the name? Fran. Well, as Glassman puts it, I think anything that leaves you laying on your back, gasping for air, wondering what had just happened to you should be named after a girl. Now, even though the journal entry mentioned three rounds of 21-15-9, which we can all agree would probably make someone throw up, these days, this classic CrossFit benchmark workout is just a 21-15-9 thrusters and pull-ups, thankfully. But let's not just stop there. Fran has so many variations and will continue to be one of the most widely used workouts in CrossFit. Some of these common variations of Fran include Double Fran, Heavy Fran, Kalsu Fran, Nav, and then some classics like Fantasyland and the recently created Friendly Fran. Finally, what's generally considered a good time range for Fran itself? Completing Fran is an achievement in itself. So even if it takes you longer than these times, just by attempting this workout, you've outdone most. Anything under five minutes, I would consider pretty good. Under three minutes, consider great. You're probably a semi-pro athlete, you love the gym, and you probably go in twice a day. Under two minutes, however, and you're probably competing at the CrossFit Games. Got another Fran fact? Comment down below. Number two, the introduction of the butterfly pull-up potentially one of the most controversial parts of the sport we all love. The butterfly pull-up came into use during the 2009 CrossFit Games by the 2007 runners-up, Brett Marshall. Brett began using the butterfly variation over the kipping variation to increase output of repetitions compared to his competitors. As any competitor would, they saw what Brett was doing and copied him. Fast forward 11 years down the track, and the butterfly pull-up is just another part of this sport. Now at the highest level of competition, this movement doesn't come up very often, being replaced for the much more physically demanding chest to bar pull-up, requiring the athlete to get their chest to the bar instead of just their chin over the bar. This allows both the judge and the athlete 
to have an easier standard to judge off. Yes, it's much easier to do. Yes, I understand too many it is considered cheating. Yes, untrained athletes performing this movement have a much higher chance of getting injured. But with proper upper body training, a coach who can actually guide you through the proper preparation for your body, and with the correct technique, this movement is practical to maintain the intensity of the workout. Agree to disagree, what's your opinion? Number three. In 2011, Noah Olsen, then 19 years old, was a volunteer at the 2011 Southeast Regional. He was starstruck to see some of his favorite athletes at this regional, including CrossFit Games director Dave Castro. He went on to a whim and introduced himself to Dave saying, hey, I know I'm only a volunteer, but next year I'm going to be competing as an athlete. Dave replied with probably the same way that anyone would reply, yeah, sure, mate, no worries. Like, you know, in 2012, Noah Olsen qualified for the 2012 Southeast Regional, placing 24th overall. He met back up with Dave Castro and Dave remembered that conversation. The story of Josh Bridges. Josh Bridges' introduction to the sport of CrossFit was unique, to say the least. He was a collegiate wrestler in high school. He began college pursuing wrestling and then left college to pursue business. He became a cold call phone salesman and for a year, he remained in the four corners of his building. One of the guys at his workplace said to Josh one day, Hey man, I'm going to try to become a Navy SEAL. You should try it. Josh loved the idea and gave himself a year to train up and become a SEAL. Nervous, he still enlisted and never regretted his decision. During SEAL training, Josh Bridges met Dave Castro, a Navy SEAL BUDS instructor. Dave would make his platoon go on these ruck runs around the entirety of their base. The further they got in, the faster Castro would increase his pace until everyone was gone, except for Josh. Josh, as Rich Froning said, is a bulldog always nipping at your heels. You turn around and he's just there. Josh would be grinning and as he would overtake Dave with a few of the other fellow SEALs. One of Josh's fondest recounts of Dave Castro as an instructor was when at the end of one of these brutal ruck runs, he came up to Josh and said, good work. During these intense training sessions, the SEALs got two to three hours of break between three hour sessions. Instead of going around, napping, eating tons of food, watching movies, relaxing, Josh got into the gym and worked hard. He found CrossFit through some of his fellow Navy SEALs who were using it to become better at their profession. We all know Josh Bridges. He's undoubtedly a Hall of Famer when it comes to CrossFit legends a serving Navy SEAL while taking podium positions at the games, winning workouts, being the shortest and the oldest guy on the court. Josh Bridges was somebody the CrossFit community could get behind. The king of CrossFit, Rich Froning, was sick but still comes first in 2014 regionals. It's set in stone just how good and how much of an absolute beast Rich Froning Jr. really is. 
four-time fittest man on earth, five-time affiliate cup winner. He's produced some phenomenal athletes from Mayhem athletes such as Haley Adams and Royce Dunn. Coming off three back-to-back -back wins at the CrossFit Games in 2011, 2012, and 2013, came the Central East Regional. Arguably one of the toughest regions in CrossFit to qualify, it had two past CrossFit Games winners, 2010 Games winner Graham Holmberg and the three-time champ Rich Froning. It also had a plethora of top 10 Games finishes. Scott Panchek, Marcus Hendren, Nick Forey, Nick Uranka, and Gerald Sasser. So this region was tough, but what many people didn't realize was what made it tougher. Now leading up to competitions, many athletes generally get sick, me included. All the weeks of training, the stress, the ability to peak at a certain time leaves your body vulnerable, vulnerable to germs and bacteria. Rich had a strong form of bronchitis leading into the, and for the entirety of the duration of the weekend at the 2014 Central East Regional. This not only gave him an excuse to hold back, but he won four events and didn't finish outside the top three all weekend against some of the hardest competition in CrossFit. Number six, Rossfit. Rick Ross does CrossFit. Rick Ross, famous rapper, wasn't known for having a stunning physique. In 2011, on the same plane trip, Ross had two seizures, causing him to be resuscitated with CPR. This was a massive eye-opener for the American rapper. He decided to make a change and hired the help of CrossFit Games athlete Garrett Fisher. Rick maintains 100 pounds or 45 kilos of weight loss since starting CrossFit in 2013, saying, the most I used to exercise was standing up to count all my money. You know what I'm saying? Ross joked, it was just time for me to tighten up a little bit. Number seven, the CrossFit total. What can 13 years do to the overall strength in a sport of fitness? Apparently quite a lot. We go from just a bunch of guys and girls throwing down at their local box to professional athletes sponsored by some of the largest sporting corporations in the world. The CrossFit total is just a test of raw strength, where the other CrossFit total is more designed for those experienced in Olympic lifting. CrossFit total can literally be done by anybody. Three lifts, back squat, strict press, and deadlift, and the total weight moved is your overall score. Playing to your strengths and strategy can be used. And in 2018, the four minute timer per lift made this a lot more aggressive. Now here's where it gets impressive. We can look at the differences between athletes in 2007, people training in the garage versus people in 2018, 2020, training with a big company and a nice gym, sponsored, living the life of a full-time athlete. But what I really wanna care about, and what I really wanna look into is the data. Now in 2007, the scores were actually quite impressive, especially from the men's side. A guy by the name of Connor Banks scored an absolute massive total of 1,225 pounds or roughly about 555 kilos. For the women, however, it was a lot less impressive. Nicole Dehart scored 530 pounds. But if we progress towards the totals in 2018, 20, we see a vast improvement in overall average and female strength. Now, even though the top scores in 2018, Royce Dunn, only outdid Connor Banks by 30 pounds, the average lift of the males had improved. However, I am far more intrigued about the females' totals. Dear Claire Toomey in 2020 scored a total of which is a 360 pound improvement to the 2007 results by Nicole. The massive improvement by professionalizing a sport is insane. And these ladies and men are now putting up some pretty decent weights when it comes to powerlifting.
Was there anything there in that list you genuinely learned? Is there something that you know that wasn't on the list? Please comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, you guys at home, stay a beast. Thank you.